Hey, I was in Quebec City last week and I tried out the new DJI Inspire 1 for a review article that I'm writing for Roller Drone Magazine. So check this out. This one belongs to André Verville, he's president of Photometric in Quebec and he gives classes to land surveyors who use multi-rotors in their work to do stereoscopic mapping. And he thinks the Inspire one is something they might want to use in the future. So he needs to be familiar with this specific piece of technology. Uh, usually I fly with the Observer 6, a drone that I have designed and uh, built and that is presently sold uh, by Canada Drones in, in uh, collaboration with Canada Drones. And my first impression is it's going to be something easy for beginners, but you know, it, given the price as well, may not be the, the, the right thing because beginners are almost are always nervous, but except that it's a very easy machine to, uh, to uh, pilot. The DJI Inspire 1 is a great looking aircraft. It's not a perfect aircraft, especially since it was pre-ordered. It, it feels like they're still fixing some of the bugs. This was Verville's first time flying it and uh, it wouldn't hold its position the way it's supposed to be. The Inspire 1 has a special set of sensors on its belly that allow it to kind of see what's on the floor uh, and it uses it to maintain its altitude and its position uh, even when it's indoors. In theory that would have allowed it to remain still even inside the gymnasium where we tried it but it, it wasn't working. That was a bit of a disappointment. It might be something they need to fix in the firmware. We'll just have to wait and see but we had to be re really careful with it. We didn't try any of the automatic function on it. It's It's got an automatic liftoff and an automatic landing. In fact after the first Inspire 1 sold obviously the first Inspire 1 crashed. This video was uploaded on YouTube last week. The pilot the pilot who uploaded this doesn't say what actually caused the crash. He was uh, doing an automatic liftoff, but it's, it shows that, well, probably there is still stuff that needs to be fixed in the firmware. So like I said, anybody who already has an Inspire 1 has to have pre-ordered it. So that always comes with a bit of a disclaimer. I, they're always working out stuff at that point. And maybe it's wrong for DJI to use a customer base as a testing bed like this, but you can have your own opinion on that. My feeling when I flew it, and I only flew it for about five minutes and only indoors in a small space, so I couldn't really push it the way I would have liked outdoors, but it felt, it was a very pleasant experience. It was very fun to fly. Like I said, it wouldn't hold position, so I, need, I needed to keep hands on the remote at all time. If I let go, it would just drift. But as long as I was giving it pilot input, it flew very well. The gains right out of the box, because we hadn't played with the gains or anything, were very smooth, very good. It had smooth motion, but it didn't feel sluggish. So it felt strong and solid, but still was able to give me a smooth and constant motion, especially in the yaw movement, which I, I thought was uh, amazing, just out of the box without any gain set settings, it would pan left and right really smooth like I was on a tripod. We didn't have the position lock but the, the sonar on it worked very well and that allows it to keep its uh, keep a constant relative distance to the ground. I didn't have to play with the throttle to keep it a, a constant altitude over the floor or so maybe a couple of meters off the floor. It would hold that uh, altitude. So that sonar is a very nice feature, makes it very easy to do video indoors, but you have to keep in mind the performance of this sensor module, the camera, the, the sonar, uh, could be affected by the ground surface. Like for instance, if you have carpet, uh, the sonar is not gonna work too well on carpet. I really like the camera on this craft, I really like the transforming legs on it, the landing gear system. It might look like a gimmick, it's not, it's actually very clever, it's a way of reducing weight, uh, removing the extra weight from a landing gear. It's a way of lowering the center of gravity and guaranteeing a 360 degree view for the camera. So it's, it's very clever. On the downside, if it ever breaks, that intricate system of gears inside of it, if it ever breaks, um, I'm not too sure how easy that is going to be to repair. And it comes with the X3 camera that has a built-in gimbal. I've always used a GoPro on my own multi-rotors and the X3 does a couple of things better than the GoPro. Uh, 
for one thing, there's no fisheye lens. So you don't get any of the distortion. It's got, I think it's 94 degree view angle, which is wide enough for aerial video, but not having this fisheye lens means that you don't need to correct the image afterwards in post-processing and it will record 4K video, but you have to reduce the frame rate to 24, 25 frames per second. If you wanna do the standard 30 frames per second, you have to drop down the resolution a notch. Uh, so that means that it won't give you as much resolution as the new GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition, but the fact that it doesn't have the fisheye lens and also the fact that it has a built-in filter thread uh, on front of the lens, so you can screw in a polarized filter or just a protective filter. It comes with a protective clear filter. Uh, that gives it a little bit of an edge over the GoPro and it's all integrated. The video goes into the Lightbridge system and that's sent to the remote and you can plug in your smartphone or tablet into the remote and get the video right there. So and that's one that probably gonna be the biggest selling feature of the Inspire One. It's a fully integrated system, it's complete. The ease of use, the integration of all this system and th that's the reason people are either gonna love it or they're gonna hate it. Uh, Cause the hobbyist in me is thinking, well, what if something breaks and I need to fix it? Well, then you're gonna have to buy DJI parts. The expensive batteries, 160 to $200 for a battery, you're gonna have to buy that from DJI. You need to acquire separately a tablet or smartphone that is compatible, that is powerful enough to give you the video feed. So even though I said a lot of good things about the Inspire One, keep in mind, if you do go that route, you're gonna be locked into DJI products afterwards. And don't forget, it's called the Inspire One. So hinting to the fact there might be an Inspire 2 down the line. Um, will it be better than the first one? Meh, most likely. So as you can see, I'm still pretty much undecided about the Inspire 1. I wanna like it, there's a lot of good stuff about it, but there's also a lot of stuff that's not so good about it. My full review of the Inspire 1 will be in the next edition of Rotor Drone Magazine. There's a link just below, so check that out. I would also like to thank André Verville from Photometric for having the courage of letting me try his Inspire 1. And as always, safe flying.